I think someone's shy. Well, this kind of works, I guess. What's up, everyone? This is all Destroyer229, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Scarlet. Last time, we did a bit of a training montage for Team 3, just fighting a bunch of Chansey before taking on the False Dragon Titan. Which ended up being two Pokemon, though not at the same time, unfortunately. We've gotten all of the Herba Mystica, but our journey with Arvin is not over yet. And now Professor Sada wants to meet up with us and Arvin. Though Arvin isn't exactly the most pleased to hear from his mother. In this episode, you might be wondering why we aren't anywhere closer and we just kind of started out where we last left off. And that's because when I was just kind of looking around the general area where I ended the episode, I saw that. And I thought, oh, hey, maybe that's a TM or something. Uh, it is in fact not a TM. It's a stake. Two stakes very close to one another. I'm a little surprised that just how close in proximity these two were. But what makes it interesting is that that should be the final stake for... If these are all located within kind of the general four areas, that should be the last stake for this spot. So I'm gonna go to the Gracia stones and let's maybe check on that seal. I'm wondering because it does seem to be like there's four Probably four stakes, which means, assuming that I'm right in that they, the stakes all lead for the, toward the same seal in the area. Um, then there should be, let's actually put a marker. There we go. Let's maybe head on over there and see if the seal is broken. Presumably it would be, though I was honestly kind of hoping that I'd be able to get somewhere up here. Uh, like, I figured the last stake would probably be up here. Very gimme cool. I guess not. But it doesn't seem like it. In fact, oh, jeez. Okay, uh, there's a lot of Toad's Cool and Toad's Curl. Um... There does not seem to really be a whole lot up here. In fact, it's actually pretty... I don't think the game really wants me to be up here. Wait, what just happened? What just happened?! Okay, the game really doesn't want me to be up here, despite the fact that there's obviously stuff in Pokemon up here. Reversal. Uh, Babiri Berry. There's a Fortress. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what the heck happened there. It's not like this is the Breath of the Wild where my climbing's impeded by the rain. Okay, so... Is my assumption correct? My assumption's not correct. There's still two seals here. Huh. So then perhaps. Ooh, a Jolteon! So, I guess the stakes aren't necessarily tied to the individual areas then? 
But are the stakes kind of set? Here, hold on a sec. Uh, because we also have... The other one is located right around here. Let's maybe check that area and see how many stakes are there. Because my assumption was that, like, there's, oh, maybe these things are in each of the different areas. There's four stakes in each area that correspond to that seal. Ah! And then once you find all four in that area, then that unlocks whatever Pokemon is inside there. I'm kind of wondering if maybe instead of that, it's one of those things where it's like, no, each of, whether, like, maybe there's just, they're in all different areas throughout Paldea, or worst case scenario, uh, it's instead, like, it goes in an order. So in order to actually open up all these things, you have to find every single other stake. I hope that's not the case. But let's see how many stakes are used up in this one. Um, no, this one. Whoa, what did I run into? Oh, Pommy. This one still has three seals. Huh. So then, I mean, this one's also purple. They do give off hues, so... You know what? It's probably color-coded in that instance. The stakes are all color-coded to match whatever seal that they belong to, but it's probably the case that those... the stakes with those colors are situated all throughout Paldea? I mean, that would make the most sense to me. Meantime, we're pretty close to the lighthouse anyway, though it would be faster to just teleport. Uh, let's maybe just run over there. We can easily climb up the back way too, now that we have all of Coridon's abilities now. It does make traveling really nice and fluid. So that's actually really nice just to get around. All right, but we're here. Poco Path. And actually, the way is open. Seriously, you beat me here? Well, this is the lab. I used to come here to play all the time when I was a kid. There'd better be a good reason for calling us here like this. Let's find out. Everyone always says she's some kind of genius. Absolutely brilliant as a Pokemon professor. My mom, that is. But let me tell you, as a parent, she's the worst. All she ever does is work. She never comes home. I don't have a single memory of her, her ever even playing with me. Her own kid! The boss is the only one who was there for me. Always. Anyway, it's open now. Go on in. I just want to get this over with.
I need your help. I am currently at the deepest point of Area Zero in the Great Crater of Paldea. I've been researching the unique Pokemon here for a very long time. I'm asking the two of you to lend a hand to help carry out the final step of the Great Professor Sada's glorious research. The final step? But there is something we need first. Something that can be found within that lab. What we need is the Scarlet Book. Wait, you mean this book? Ah, so you took it from the lab, did you, Arvin? Ah, well, this expedites things. Bring the Scarlet Book to the deepest depths of Area Zero. I promise that it will be an experience worth treasuring if you come. I must note, however, that Area Zero is both home to vicious Pokémon and outfitted with powerful cybernetic security systems. It seems to me that you might struggle if the two of you were to enter alone. You may take the time to gather some reliable allies before you come, if you feel the need. I'll be awaiting you in the deepest part of Area Zero, whenever you arrive. Area Zero. That place is bad news. It was down in Area Zero that Mabossif got wounded in the first place. Down in the great crater of Paldea. In all honesty, I'd be perfectly happy to never see that place again. Are you gonna go? Of course I'm gonna go. I mean, it's where very strong Pokemon are, right? What's wrong with a little adventure? I suppose she did ask. And I can't just stand by and watch while a friend heads off into danger on his own. So, I guess I'm going to. Besides, I'd love to give Mom a piece of my mind. All right then, Destro, outside. We're gonna have a Pokemon battle to see if we're really ready to head into Area Zero or not. Mostly to see if I'm ready or not. Let's go! Alright, and now we have to battle Arvin. Um, doesn't seem like there's actually anything here, just the walls. It's a bit for Pokemon. Mashchiff? Huh. So when Mabostiff didn't evolve yet. My bar's a mess of scribbled letters and numbers. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything here. There are picture books for kids, one of which tells a story about making a big stamp. It seems like this, like, Arvin was just kind of here, and Sana was just kind of in her own corner, just doing her own research. There's a magazine called A Culture. What? An article caught your eye. Enigmas of Paldea. Fluttermane, the ghostly pterosaur. Fluttermane, a name taken from a strange creature with a matching description appearing in the Scarlet Book, is said to float around the sky at night with long hair writhing about it. Eyewitnesses' account describe it as resembling a giant mischievous at first glance, albeit a highly fierce and aggressive one. Some believe it's a ghost of a pterosaur from a long gone era. Huh. Interesting. I like mischievous. So yeah, I mean, it seems as though, like, they 
this was just the living arrangement, but then just Sada was just uh, consumed with her own research. Okay, um... I'm actually wondering what Arvin will use. He does have Maboshchif, which I'd be surprised if he didn't use. Though whether that'd be his lead or his ace. I mean, I would assume that would be his ace. So let's leave Lorena out front. And we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Excellent. You ready too, right, my boss, Jeff? Yep, my boss, Jeff says he's ready. Wait, you're battling with my boss, Jeff? Are you sure? Okay, yeah, I can see why you'd be worried. But my buddy here is bursting with energy. You never know, he was so weak just a little while ago. Won't leave me alone, always whining at me. Wanting to battle you and your Pokemon? It's been so long I nearly forgot. But he always did love to battle. Even if we always lost that student council girl. The battle fanatic one. Anyway, my point is there's no need to worry. We're a brand new Arvin and boss Chef. We're feeling audacious. Or maybe, herbaceous? Let me give you a taste of what we can do. Okay, and now we're battling Arvin. How tough is this gonna be? So the first Pokemon is Greedent. Okay, so it does seem like he's using the Pokemon that he used throughout the journey. The Pokemon we met during our hunt for the Herba Mystica are all stars. Every one of them! 58?! Oh, that's not good. Okay, but yeah, it seems like he is using all the Pokemon that he used against the Titans. Oh, this is not going to end well for me. Okay. Well, I'm not entirely sure Lorena is going to be the best. Seems like it's doing pretty well, though. Oh, come on! Oh, and it was a high damage one roll. Damn it. Okay. I think he mostly used a lot of normal types. Let's go ahead. We'll use Hunter. Ghost should be immune to most of these Pokemon, then. The fact that it's fighting should also be pretty good. Perfect. Okay. It's gonna be a little bit risky, but at least Hunter has some decent speed. Alright, what's his next Pokemon? Scovillian! Okay. Fire. Um. Here, I want to keep Hunter, so let's switch. We'll make Itsuki a sacrifice play. And pray that he uses a grass type move. He uses Zen Headbutt! No, I guess that would make sense. Level 60! Okay, uh, Silk Trap. he doesn't use something like Flamethrower. Fire Blast! Ah, crap. Well, I can't lower his speed then. Well, that's gonna be a problem. Let's use... Skitter Smack. Oh, he's faster. Well, Itsuki was just a sacrifice play anyway. Uh, okay. Flying, yeah, flying's gonna be the most effective thing that I can do, which unfortunately still leaves Fontaine. I could try a waterfall. Waterfall at least would give me same type of attack bonus. I'm not sure I really want to try terrestrializing though. 
Um, what is Hurricane? Hurricane could potentially cause confusion. It has terrible accuracy, though. Let's go with a waterfall. Energy ball! Ugh. Okay, this is bad. Oh, come on! Ah, crap. Okay, um... Energy Ball, Fire Blast. I'll send out Mirror. Mirror's kind of slow. Alright, we'll start out with the Fake Out. Probably gonna be faster than me, but as long as I can survive a hit. Oh, come on! Okay, down goes Scovillian. Alright, so what's his next Pokemon? Got a little bit of healing, not a lot. Next Pokemon is Toad's Cruel. Uh, this is a problem. Toad Scroll is ground grass. Gosh, level 61? Man, these Pokemon keep going higher and higher in their levels. What is Maboshith level 64? Uh we'll use detect, see what he does. I don't think I'm winning this fight, but I can barely see what he does. Earth power. And try close combat. Power whip. Damn it. Ugh, grass ground. Bug, I guess, is effective. Ice would also be effective. Ooh, this is not gonna be well for me at all. I'd like to stick with Hunter if I could, so we'll, we'll go with Ash. I can at the very least use Giga Drain. Sludge Bomb! Oh, come on! I should have used rapid spin. I probably should have figured he would have been faster. Great. Wow, really? How many crits is he gonna get? Okay, close combat. I'm definitely not winning this. Because I figured level 55 would be what I would need. This is a lot. This is a lot higher than I figured I would need to be. Okay, well, I can at least pretty much one shot Toad's Cruel. Hunter might be able to work pretty well if I can get its his speed up. Next is Garganical. Okay, Garganical's really slow. Um, uh, move of the user's previous move fail. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, that's actually not gonna be super good, so close combat. Animal's gonna have some pretty good physical defense though. Ooh. Well, that's pretty much game. Yep. Still, if I was only a, if I was a few levels higher, that might actually work to one shot him. All right, I lost six thousand poker dollars. That's fine. Yikes. Level. six. 60. Okay, well, 
that is going to take some time to get to where I should be. Um, there is North Province Area 1. And since Team 3 is at least around the level range of the Pokemon here, it shouldn't be as bad to take on the Pokemon. Especially the trainers around here. I think the train. Have I fought a Wigglytuff before? Oh yeah, I have. We don't really have that much time left, but I think... Acidberry. I think what I can at the very least attempt to do... Is try to gain a little bit more experience. We just gotta find a good Pokemon to go up against. This Pathra. Um. Go with that. This Pathra is a psychic type. So, yeah, I mean. I'm trying to think what would be good. Obviously, level 60 would work, but I uh, I really don't want to have to go back to Chansey Grinding. It was one thing to do it before the, uh, the Titan. I don't want to have to go back to that immediately. Especially since they seem to be in pretty good condition to take on this area. What? Oh, those are Axios. There's a trainer right here, too. Well, that does give me an idea. We're not gonna have that much time, but we can at the very least see... Let's see, Flareon! Oh, this is a bad matchup. It's his only Pokemon, though. Uh, so we'll switch on over to Lorena. Okay, so I don't think I necessarily need to be up to level 60 to take on Harvin. Uh, Hunter seemed like he was doing pretty well on his own, even against all the Pokemon at a much higher level. So if I could maybe raise it, I think if I can raise my Pokemon up to level 55, like my original intention was, I might be good? At the very least, I can go from there. Uh, like, just make another attempt once all my Pokemon are around level 55. I still haven't actually fought you. I've seen you. I've never actually fought you. What are you? Tinkatoff. Okay. I didn't do a whole lot. Okay, well in that case, let's try Phantom Force. Yeah, I think probably the best thing I could do would be to take on the rest of the trainers that are around here and by Cassiorea. Since the levels around here seem to be pretty comparable to one another, I can at the very least do that. I'm actually kind of wondering if one of the Elite Four members, and then I would assume there will be something similar. Uh, Sawsbuck. I'm assuming there's going to be something similar to this at the end of the, um, ba 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 ba. The Team Star. It would make sense to me that something similar like that happens. Like the big final fight that you have to do. Um, not really seeing a whole lot of trainers around here. Uh, I am also going south and out of here. Though it does actually lead to the pathway to where Aerie is. Uh, also... I'll just do that. So that way I know roughly what direction I'm going in. Uh, ooh, Flamethrower! That might be good, though I'm not entirely sure there's really anyone... Well, Lorena might be pretty good to use that. Uh, 
Okay. Uh oh. Ew. I'm actually wondering if that might not be a bad thing for her to learn. Because that would at least be pretty good against Toad's Cruel. And he starts with Greedon, so the best Pokemon I could probably start with would be uh, Mirror. Mirror, I think, would be a good Pokemon to start with in that fight. And then just kind of go from there. Ooh, another TM. This one has... Pollen Puff. Okay. Well, there's another trainer over there. Ooh, an Ampharos. And plenty of Mareep. And Palmy, it looks like. Okay, um, let's go ahead. Switch on over to Lorena. Heal up. I don't know how many trainers we're going to need to fight to get the reward here. At the very least, that wouldn't be a bad idea to just grind off of the trainers. And just try to get all of that situated. Okay, you have a low kicks. Level 49. Okay, and you have two Pokemon. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll use Aqua Tail. Wow. Damn it. Freaking low kicks. Um, Fontaine. Yeah, I was a little bit weary to use Hurricane just because it's not, it's not the same type of attack bonus. It doesn't have the same amount that I'm looking for. Like, it's a special attack, and Fontaine is a physical attacker. And it has low accuracy. So I'm not entirely sure Hurricane's really going to be the best. Next is Talonflame. Okay, well, this will work. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to think what exactly the best thing is. I mean, realistically, there's not really a whole lot more that I can really say. It's just a matter of getting that training done. Getting all those levels. And I'm still weary of just using up a bunch of, like, rare candies and experience candies. Um, just because... I mean, I'm gonna, probably going to have to do something similar with the other teams as well. So I don't want to just blow through everything on this. And then it's like, oh, now I have to do everything the legit way anyway. Okay, we'll grab this. Okay, good. Hyper Potions. I think we're pretty much good to call it soon. Let's see what you are. And then we'll just kind of poke our head into the next area. And then we'll call it a day. So you have a Oranguru. Hey, Oranguru isn't really all that... There's a Chansey! That will at least help out a little bit. I'm not gonna go and, like I said, I'm not gonna go out and do a bunch of grinding on chances at the very least. Already did that, hoping not to just completely be relying on that. All right, what's your next Pokemon? Your next Pokemon is a Glalie. Okay. Uh, I... Well, I've got fighting types. I'll send out Mirror. Ice is weak to fighting. Ice is weak to a lot of things, actually. And instead of using an Ice move, you just use Bite. 
Well, okay, it's snow skate. Oh, you're just gonna make it snow. Ooh, scary. Yeah, no. All right, well, that's another trainer down. All you've successfully done is make it laggy. Okay. Um. Can I go with this indeed? I don't think so. I think it's just a regular indeedy. Is it just a regular indeedy? Little sparkles, but maybe that was just from the Pokeball. Ah! Darn it! I don't know what indeedy shiny looks like. Where'd the Chansey go? Damn it, it despawned! Ah, crap. All right, well, we'll poke our heads in, and while we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and call it a di There's a, well, there's a Pokemon Center pretty close to the end there. I don't think we'll head over that right away. Curiosity's sake. What is that? A, oh, a Bisharp would have been so cool! Oh, there's also Phalanx here. Man. If only I was still going after like, oh, it's like who would be added to teams or something like that. Man, Bisharp would have been so nice. Anyway, next time on Let's Play Pokemon Scarlet. Ooh, there's Luxray over here too. Uh, we are going to continue on in our exploration around here and trying to fight any nearby trainers as well. Uh, I should switch on over to a fighting type. I think... Level 55 I think is still good for our purposes, though for a different reason than what I originally intended. Uh, but I think trying our best to get a bit more experience for everyone else and reaching level 55 is going to be the best thing that we can try to do uh, to at least overcome a perceived final challenge with Arvin. I'm assuming there's going to be a similar challenge for Team Star. Uh, ooh, bamboo shoot. And then, of course, then there's just the Elite Four, which I have no idea what exactly I'm getting into for that. So, we'll see what we can do. We'll explore around here, and then maybe once we kind of reach Airy, um, we'll, well, I mean, we'll have a general idea of what level the Pokemon are around here. I'm still thinking probably around level 55-ish should be where Team 2 should be. Uh, not sure which team will get the necessarily training. But at the very least, we can focus on training here. Uh, just trying to reach Airy and kind of exploring around the nearby area. Uh, fighting all the trainers here and then trying to find a bunch of trainers over at Cassio Rea. I think trying to get everything situated in both of those areas is going to make a world of difference in terms of getting the experience that we need as well as continuing to explore. That way I'm not just doing a bunch of just off-screen grinding the entire time. So that way we're at least getting some sort of content and exploring around the general area of Paldea. So until next time, everyone. Take care.